Hello friends, how are you? This is one of my favorite topics because I love creating content focused on introverts. And I am Mexican, so for Latino standards, I'm quite introvert, but for European, Central European standards, I'm an extrovert. And this is a place that I currently live in and I've been living here for seven years. So I think I'm somewhere in the middle, but I have the chance to work and to talk to both sides. And I love working with both. But I especially appreciate when I have a one-on-one -on -one with someone who considers herself or himself an introvert, self-conscious, self-aware, and when they open up to share their fears or their thoughts with me, for me it's super valuable because I know it's a challenge for them. And I want to share with you some of the misconceptions I've heard when it comes to building a business online or a personal brand online for introverts, because sometimes they think that it's not possible for them to start sharing their, their ideas online and that's something that it's only for extroverts it's only for people who are like super outgoing or who are really good at camera or who are really confident and that's a big big lie and um i actually lived this process um two years ago when i started building my online presence from scratch i was really really shy uh, I didn't like to talk to the camera, so I started with an anonymous account. And I've been through that too. And also when I used to work in corporate, I really struggled with sharing my ideas because usually the super extroverted people take over always in the meetings or in events. And then we tend to, you know, shrink and to be smaller. But I think there are other ways that we could capitalize our strengths as introverts or, or as less extroverted people. Uh, nowadays, there are more figures going out there, like Simon Sinek, for instance, in leadership, that he is a self-proclaimed introvert, and he, know, he struggles sometimes with public speaking and all that, but it's something he learned in, with practice, and he also found his own style, and I also include myself. I, it took me years to find my own style, and now I am more confident on camera, but when I started, I... I didn't want to share my ideas online. I was really, really shy. Um, hitting the publish button for me was like, I was super nervous, but it's something that it goes with practice. And I want to share with you three recommendations for you to start sharing your ideas online, shaping your business online and creating an authentic personal brand online. And these are three tips that per I still use them, and, but they worked for me so much and in the beginning, especially at the beginning. So the first one is that you don't have to start talking to the camera. You don't have to start creating videos right away. You can start with something that it feels more comfortable for you. For example, writing or with some design or with some, maybe some video, but not about you, but about something that you do, or maybe you typing in the laptop, but not with your face. So those are the first baby steps you can start taking. Here, the most important is that you want to strengthen your muscle of telling stories and your muscle of publishing. That's the most important at the beginning. You are strengthening the ability to articulate your ideas, what you want to share with people, what you want to educate, to teach, and put it into a post, into a video, into a reel, wherever you feel most comfortable for you that it can live. But we want to start packaging and articulating these ideas into a post or into any format and to start publishing them. So maybe you have a lot of ideas and it can happen that you haven't even Put, wrote them down, you need to start writing them down or, or putting in a, I call it a container, in any sort of container, in a post, in a reel, in a carousel, wherever. And that's the first challenge. And then the second challenge is to start publishing, just hitting that publish, publishing button. And the more you do it, you will feel more comfortable, more and more comfortable. And the first months probably they are a little bit uncomfortable especially when you have friends or family following you but from my experience i can tell you that most people will be like wow you're so inspiring rather than oh what are you doing who do you think you are that's only in our minds most people will be supportive and the ones who are like eh 
eh, they will probably unfollow you, but that's fine because what we want here is not to please people. What we want here is to build a sustainable and authentic, joyful business. And if people who unfollow us are not even our ideal client, we don't really care about them. So relax about that. Actually, it's, it's the best is when people right away unfollow you because that, that's good for them. They don't keep seeing your content if they don't, are not interested. And it's also a good sign for you like, okay, only the ones who will remain will be the ones who are interested in what I am sharing. So that's really important to do from the beginning and not to waste our time with people who are not even interested in our services. That's also fine. And then the second tip that I want to share with you is to, I have seen this with, with many introverts actually, or not only introverts, would be people who are really self-aware, like they want to know a lot about what they talk about and sometimes they feel like really shy or afraid of just being self-proclaimed experts in something. So what I sh see with them is that they invite a lot of experts in some subjects. So they do collaborations on podcasts or YouTube videos and they are mostly asking the questions. So the spotlight and the attention goes to the guest and not to the host. So that's also a really good way for starting if you feel like. And you can start a podcast or YouTube video and with these people who are expert in topic, depending on what, what's your niche and what's your audience, you can invite people on certain fields that will be interesting for your audience or for your, the audience that you're building. And the last tip, and I also really like this one because I struggled so much with this. Do, you don't need to speak like an expert. You don't have to say like, hey guys, this is the only way to lose weight. Hey guys, this is the only way to start your online presence. I never felt like that because I personally don't think that there is only one way of doing things. And also I don't feel like I'm a super expert. And if you are also into Buddhism, you can understand that we are never experts in life like it's a continuous learning never ending learning so being a self-proclaimed expert feels like a little bit off and it takes a lifetime and many lives to really know about a subject so i don't support that idea but what you could do is always speak from your truth and from your experience you can actually use those words from my experience in my perspective from what i have observed and if you already have some experience or some clients, then you can already say like, oh, my client, I've, I've observed this or from this group coaching or from this workshop, I've noticed that. So this is something that will be true for you because you have experienced that, you have seen them, okay? Or if you have created something, let's say in your nine to five, in the past, in corporate, you can also bring them to the videos or to whatever you share, like, oh, I have observed this in the meetings or this in leadership or whatever your experience is, it's completely valid. You don't have to speak from a super expert point of view. It's already fine if you speak from your workshops. And in my case, what helps a lot is that I started to host in-person workshops. I started around two years ago and that boosted and strengthened so much my sense of confidence because I knew that what I was talking about in camera or post or whatever was not BS and it was not only my assumption or only like um, an idea there floating. No, it's something that I have observed. It's something that in a way it's proven. Okay, proven you need more, like a bigger sample, but it's something that I've seen many times in many group coachings I've held or workshops I've held. So I feel really confident to talk about that. And if someone asks me something else that I am not so aware of, it's completely valid also to say like, I don't have experience with that or from my perspective, this is what I observed, but I, I haven't observed those cases. That's also fine. Uh, I've never seen myself as someone who would come and tell you, these are the only three tips, like as an introvert, you need to follow, like that's not with me. And I invite you to find also your own unique way of communicating and you don't have to be a super expert and self-proclaimed guru, like, no. So find your way. And the last words is that if you need help 
<laughs> I'm really happy to work with you. You can check my offers. I will leave the link on the box. But the most important is that you feel like it's possible for you with practice. So it's just like a muscle, muscle of telling stories, of sharing your story, of publishing, and also being real authentic, because in that way, others will connect with you, but other people who also connect with your style and with your personality. Um, so it's fine to let go people who are not a good fit with you or they, you don't match with them, but the ones who are really interested in your message or maybe resonate with you will stay. And we want those. So thank you for watching and see you next week.